Joined here by Washington catcher Kurt Suzuki, 13-year MLB vet, uh, fourth generation Japanese American, born and raised in Hawaii. I want to know, because there's not a ton of Asian American professional baseball players, when you told your family that this is what I want to do, I'm going to become a professional baseball player, how did they react? Um, I mean, they're always supportive, you know, anything that I ever wanted to do, you know, they're very supportive, uh, which I'm, you know, obviously grateful and, and blessed, you know, to have parents that support me with whatever dreams that I had, and, um, you know, they just kind of just said, you know, you want to do it, go for it. I want to clarify, when we talk about Asian American athletes versus Asian athletes, we mean that um, U.S. born athletes but with an Asian heritage, as opposed to, say, Ichiro Suzuki, right. Masahiro Tanaka, the Asian players who were born overseas and, and came over here. Why do you think there are so few Asian American professional athletes or baseball players? I don't know. I mean, I think, I think size might have a lot to do with it, you know, um, you know typically Japanese um, people aren't the biggest you know obviously there's there's a, f a few you know Asian um, players that have come over you know to the States and and have done really well obviously Ichiro, Hideki Matsui, Masahiro Tanaka you know uh, those type of players um, but you don't see it very often especially Asian American you don't definitely don't see that very often you played in Midland Texas for a little while which I can't imagine um, there was a huge Asian American population. <laughs> yeah. What was that experience like being, because you grew up in Hawaii, there's a lot of Asian Americans there. If you go to a mid place like Midland, Texas, what was that like? Well, it was definitely a different culture shock, you know. Um, you know, not, not many, like you said, Asian Americans there. It was just part of the, the gig, you know. You, you go to these different stops and, and you experience new things and, and I think it prepares you to, to become, you know, more diversified, you know, where you can learn about new cultures and, and places that you can say you've been to and things like that. It's just it's just going out there and just being you, you know, just having people like you for being yourself. You know, you don't have to be the same race or, you know, speak the same language, you know, you just be yourself and, and if you have that bond or that click, something that clicks that you become really good friends, I think that's the cool thing about it. Have you ever taught uh, teammates about Asian or Hawaiian culture? Yeah, you know, obviously Hawaii is a pretty popular vacation destination and, um, you know, everybody talks to me or asks me questions about Hawaii and what's the best island and, you know, the food here and the food there and the luau's and all that kind of thing. When they ask me questions, then I can ask them questions, you know, on what, how they celebrate New Year's or, you know, the holidays or, or things like that. So, you know, this, this definitely goes, you know, both ways where, you know, I learn about their culture and they learn about mine. When it comes to Hawaiian food, please tell me, you said Spam Musubi. <laughs> yes. That is uh, definitely one of the favorites. I think if you grew up in Hawaii, it, it's it's pretty much a, a guarantee that you love Spam Musubi. I think it's something that you, you have grown up on, and and uh, you know a lot of guys don't like it, which I don't understand why. I think it's very flavorful. <laughs> Explain what Spam Musubi is. Well, it's it's basically a canned food. Um, it's kind of like a Vienna sausage or a corned beef hash, but it's in a can and. Uh, we, we used to call it growing up spare parts of anonymous meat, um, you know. <laughs> but it's delicious. I don't, whoever said it's not good, I don't understand. Maybe because of the thought of spam, but still, it's, it's, <laughs> right. it's, it's amazing. So much of who we are is a product of our families, right? You're a fourth generation Japanese American. Um, so when did, you, when did your family first go to Hawaii and emigrate to Hawaii? So my grandparents, well, my dad's side of my grandparents were born and raised in Maui. They were basically raised in Japan, born in Hawaii, raised in Japan, and then came back to, to Maui. So they, they didn't speak, you know, a whole lot of English, where even if it was English, it was very broken English and things like that. So, um, you know, we very much had that Japanese culture growing up. Is there something distinctly Asian that you did growing up that you still do now? So, for example, something so simple, but like when you go, when anybody comes to my house, you got to take off the shoes. That's a... That's a that's a fact, right there, ground zero. Um, is there something that you find you do? We do that too, uh, to an extent. Obviously my wife is from California, so we do a little hybrid where most of the time shoes are off, but every once in a while, you know, shoes will come inside the house and, you know, it's hard for me to, to stomach, but, you know, I'll go along with it. But, you know, every New Year's, 
you know, you, you make the Ozoni soup with the lucky Japanese soup with the mochi and, and things like that, and you have, we have it every year, and that's kind of something that, that tradition that I've grown up with and we still carry on to this day. You are an inspiration as a professional athlete, as an Asian American, that many kids look up to. What does that mean to you? Uh, well, it's special. Obviously, any time that you can be a role model to, to kids, to people around um, the world or wherever you're from, I think it's, it's a very humbling thing where I, I, growing up, I've never thought I would ever be a role model besides maybe to my kids, you know, but to, to have um, numerous kids out there to look up to you and, and want to do what you do and, and kind of watch every move that you make. Uh, it's pretty neat, you know, and, and I wouldn't change it for the world. I think it's a really cool thing, and, and you try to live up to those, those role model expectations where sometimes it could be a little, uh, a little nerve-wracking or it can be tough at times, but, you know, for the most part, it, it's great. Well-deserved, and make sure people don't bring shoes into the house, though. <laughs> Kurt Suzuki, thanks so much for joining us. All Birthday right. buddies, man. Yeah, you got it. <laughs>